What a treat. Don't tell me. Oh! Welcome back to another edition of Run, Jump, Chuck with Mossy and Robbo. I send you over there to Perth, Robbo, and the world records just start tumbling. Yes, Mossy, well, there's debate in that and we'll get into that later on. But no, it was sensational to get over there in the West and a lot of action and excitement over there. Well, let's uh, get stuck into it, mate. Uh, last weekend, Perth, the Jandicott Track Classic, mate. Uh, it didn't fail to disappoint at all. Didn't at all, the Jandicott, uh, as Ollie Worm <laughs> kept saying over and over. And look, you saw it at the top of the show, Nina Kennedy, remember that name, 17 years old, jumping tall buildings uh, for fun. She jumped a PB, a World Champs qualifier, and then an outdoors world record, all within the space of about half an hour. The only people that jumped higher that night were Ollie Worm and Matt Lynch in the commentary <laughs> box. Uh, it was unreal to see, as you can see with the, the vision here. But we had a chance to catch up with our new star and hear what she had to say. Well, I really just wanted to jump 50. Yep. That was my like all-time goal this season. And I knew the conditions are good. I knew the crowd was awesome. I did it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just did it. <laughs> Sounds easy. Yeah, and then I went to 59 and I was like, I have nothing to lose. Yep. Just do it. Yep. As you said there before, Robbo, 17 years of age. She's from Peppermint Grove over there in Perth. And the champagne corks were popping there, but also there was a media frenzy. Well, she's taken her Instagram followers from 1,500 to 1,800 like that, <laughs> I've noticed. And Twitter's right up there too. But yeah, the me a lot of media interest there. Great to see the likes of Fox Sports jumping on this one. Nova even uh, giving it a little plug as well. So great to see. You can find the clip uh, if you want to watch it over and over and over like, like I have. <laughs> but uh, Mossy, one thing that was interesting as well was this debate that came up. Was it a world record? You, you heard on the commentary there. Uh, it was being called a world record. Little uh, technicality there. If you jump indoors for pole vault that's regarded as a world record so a lot of the other events if you're outdoors that's separated to indoors but for pole vault uh, indoors trumps and outdoors for the overall world record it's one of the conf it's weird it it's is weird. come on it, it is very strange so we can't say it's an, an overall world record it's the highest anyone uh, as a junior has ever jumped outdoors before and let's be honest here in australia i mean what reason do we have to jump indoors uh we've got the beautiful sunshine why would we want to cover it all well, up well unless and you're like me mate we've got to stay between that, uh that under is the true. Show, 10 to 3 that is true but uh anyway look great great jump none, uh, nonetheless and we're looking forward to seeing nina might even go higher this week and put them all put all the debate to to rest if she jumps six, uh, 464 this weekend in Adelaide, she is officially the world champion, a uh, world record holder, well, sorry. And we'll make the world champion in, uh, in August in Beijing. And that will just put it all to bed. Now, mate, uh, season opener for Kim Mickle over there in the Chucks taking on the other... 2Ks with Kelsey Lee and also Kath, and uh, yeah, it went pretty well for her too. It did. You can see here, she missed the bus, uh, not coming over to Canberra, and the other two girls, the other 2Ks, got the World Champs qualifier. Kim came out and, uh, and nailed one and got it over that, that yellow tape, which was great, and uh, we had a, a quick catch-up with her after the comp. I just sneakily wanted a few extra centimetres on these girls too, so I think we're now all about 10 centimetres away from each other, so I, uh, I'll do that on purpose. Uh, <laughs> No, but the, uh, the conditions out there tonight were actually really, really difficult. So um, I'm really, really pleased. Like, I was very iffy about even throwing here because uh, of my, my body's not doing too great at the moment. So to throw that throw in these conditions and not feeling too great is, uh, yeah, it's really exciting. And to cap everything off over there in the West, Robbo, 400-metre women's uh, race. You had Mitchell, you had Sargent. Ruby Peak and some big, big names there, mate. And uh, how did that one go? Look, mate, this was a good one. Uh, look, to be honest, a lot of the track events, the athletes were a bit down, uh, saying the conditions you know, weren't quite up to what they were in Canberra. So they, the track was a little bit slower. But uh, the women's 400, it was always going to be a cracking race. And this time it was the Queenslander, Caitlin Sargent, that came out on top. Uh, and we had a chance to catch up with her after the race. It wasn't exactly the conditions I was hoping for, but um, I just knew I had to... Kind of control myself down the back into the headwind and try and use the tailwind coming home. Well, there's your run, jump, chuck of Perth. We're going to steam on head in this episode, Robbo. But before we do that, mate, we have to catch up with all the late-breaking news. Uh, I know, mate, you trowel the internet. You'll be able to tell us uh, what are the big items on the news this week in athletics. Yes, Mossy, we're well, very exciting for a lot of our distance runners. The 24-person squad has been named for the world champs in cross-country. 
over in Gaiyang in China, and that's in, on the 28th of March. So well done, Athletics Australia, picking a full team there. That's the maximum you can send. Unfortunately, Moss and Robertson weren't on the uh, selection list again, so we've been robbed. But that's going to be fantastic, and congratulations to everyone that's going to be taking part in that event. Where, where is it being held again? Gaiyang. <laughs> Very good. Go you, Gaiyang. I like it, I like you it. You can use that hashtag. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of hashtags, uh, from the first one, Briggs, we got a hashtag love stream, thanks to uh, Kelly Hetherington. And I know there was a lot of love going on on the love stream on Saturday night, mate, and some of the big names in athletics in Australia weighed in on it. Yeah, well, that's right. And even across the meet so far, we've seen some of the former champions of the athletics world in Australia, people like Steve Hooker, as you can see here, loving the stream. But uh, look, almost had to hang the boots up when we saw this one come through. Kathy Freeman, we gave her a shout out. I, I give most people a shout out on the stream. Uh, and she managed to respond on Twitter and uh, she was enjoying the love stream. So great work, Kathy. And it was her birthday yesterday as well. Happy birthday. And uh, look, yeah, jump in. If you've got anything to say on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, while the streams are going on, um, we're only a, a quick look at the phone away and we, we'll get back to you. <laughs> well, now, mate, uh, the officials, they do a wonderful thing. Uh, athletics just couldn't keep rolling on without officials. And we know that it's always hard to get a hold of them, but they're really starting to take athletics to another level. They're trying to get things, you know, give it the kick in the bum that it deserves and get it back on the podium. I'm not talking about athletics. I'm talking about officialdom. Mossy, this was uh, this was unreal, and I don't know if viewers... sorry, I'm getting fired up. No, 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 this was this was great. So there you go, Nina Kennedy's just broken the junior world record uh, outdoors. And how do you celebrate if you're an official there at the pole vault? Well, you put a big a big tackle on your opponent official, as you can see here. The answer. And we've just actually the officials, the officials have tackled each other. This was something else, Mossy, and I believe they're both okay. Uh, so that's the most important thing. They were seen to be sharing a soft drink in the officials' room later on that evening. So I'm glad that everyone's okay. But uh, let's just have a quick another look at it again. He's now the under, he's under 20, under 20 world record. So yeah, incredible stuff there, Mossy. Uh, what a hit! And my understanding is that they're both vying for uh, that position over there at the World Championships in Guyong. No, it's not Guyong. That's for the World Cross. <laughs> but yeah, look, um, and one's from a different state, New South Wales, West uh, First East. Yeah, this is. Playing out in the officials uh, yeah, territory is very very interesting okay. who knows what will happen when we go down south this weekend you heard it all for first here folks now each week Robbo we uh, like to catch up with someone in the car well I do I, I get them I shove them in my car and we have a bit of a chat as if no one's actually talking to us uh, we've had Benny Saint, we've had Robbie Crowther, we've had Kelsey Lee Roberts. So we've gone run, jump, chuck. It needs to go now back to run. Right. Whilst I was in Canberra, I thought, oh, I need to do a quick one. So I thought I'd catch up with the quickest woman we've ever seen over 100 metres, and that was Mel Breen. We chatted about everything between what she gets off to off the track uh, and also what she thinks of Canberra. We ran about this time last year. 11, yeah, 11, I know. As, uh, Ollie Worm said, "Oh my God!" Because I didn't know, even know, I didn't know what time I'd run. Yeah. I had no idea, and everyone was just screaming. It's actually I think it had clocked eleven oh eight. Yeah, it did. Yeah. That's what eleven oh something would have been nice. But anyway, we'll worry about oh, that later. Oh, come on, my goodness! <laughs> Always wanting more. <laughs> Greedy. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, the perfect day. How many days did it take you to fall asleep? Yeah, a while. Yeah. Yeah, I don't reckon I trained very much the next week. Yeah. Yeah. It's only because in, in a previous... Because you had cameras coming at you from Yeah, everywhere. it was pretty hectic, but it was... I had to accept that this is what I wanted, so now yeah. I had to... But it's obviously taken 12 months to come to terms with it, which might yeah. sound a bit silly, but it's completely changed my life in every yeah. positive way. But it's just different now. So what do you get up to off the uh, the track when you're not, you know, taking orders from Matty B? <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoy shopping. Oh. I've gone with a bit of online shopping these days yeah. because I can do that from my bed. Yes. Right. Um, most Sundays, I don't... Oh, you're checking the 11 on the Yeah, exactly. 11 up there. Yeah. yeah. Most Sundays, I don't even get out of my pyjamas. Really? So, I feel very privileged today. I'm yeah, not dressed no, in my pyjamas right. for yeah. my Sunday. Um, I wash my car every Sunday. Okay. Gee, yeah. I tell you what, I should have come around to your house. <laughs> yeah. I um, yeah, I love, I love my little Audi. Yeah, it's a great Audi. Um, Very classy. Yeah, so I feel bad when it's dirty. Um, so most Sundays, that's like, that's that's what gets me outside. But some, most of the time, I wash it in my pajamas. I was gonna say, do you wash it? Yeah, I do. Wow. And I shampoo new pajamas. You gotta be I careful of paparazzi. If you yeah. Around. yeah. <laughs> I live way, way away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Yeah, most days go to the mall. A bit of mall rat. Yeah, 
mall rat down, yeah. down in Tuggers down nah, there. Nah, in Belco. I don't have time to go home during the day. Yeah, right, eh? So, go to the mall, have lunch. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of a very, I guess, boring life in Canberra. People could explain as that, but it's the perfect environment to get the job done. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think I'll be here my whole life. You said it, I didn't say it. No, either. no, I, it's, it's easy. And I think Laws describes it that way as well. It's just really easy um, life. Yeah, you just. Oh, we've got to go left or right? Yeah, you can go either. Okay, you, you I'll can, go left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just constant roads just yeah. around and around. I'm surprised because there was a sign there that said shops and that way and you've. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thought we might have been going to the mall with more rats. Oh. And you can catch the full extended version of that in the car with Mossy with Mel Breen just by going to our YouTube channel. And don't forget while you're there, click on subscribe for us. You're probably ready for this one. It is none other than Robbo's Run, Jump, Chuck of the Week. We've had so many different ones, buddy. buddy I'm sure you've got a good one today. Look, this is uh, of note due to the fact that it features an athlete who is very noteworthy. Look, the greatest decathlete of all time. He holds the world record. He holds the, the current world uh, champs and Olympic gold medals. His name is Ashton Eaton. This is what he got up to on the weekend in an indoor 60 metre run at the Milrose Games in New York. Goes through, doesn't win the race, but see what he does afterwards. Nick Harris, as a junior, as a Sean Magwerth, as a guest mezőnt. Ashton Eaton kiesett a szivacs túloldalára. De már elindult, mert itt a kamera van már, ő megtalálta. Megvan ő. Akkor a lendülettel ugrott a végén. And so there you go, Mossy. It was hard to go past that for this week's run, jump, chuck of the week. He's, mate, and we don't know what happened at the other side. It could have been a run, a jump, and a chuck. Might have been. He might, he might have gone no, there. No one That's right. Well, someone may know, and everyone has a secret, that's for sure. Now, Radelaide Track Classic is on this weekend, Robbo. I'm absolutely pumped because I'll be back behind the mic with mate. my mates and I tell you what mate it's going to be a beauty good to have you back on the team Mossy as we know the UV is not quite as high <laughs> down there in Adelaide so it's safe for you to uh, come back into the fold look it's going to be a cracker I was on the uh, on the phone to Adam Bishop just last night CEO down there he has got what is a mouth-watering program of events coming up running jumping and chucking across the whole board but it's the run that I want to quickly mention to start with Mossy and the women's 3,000 meters Jess Trengove Proud South Australian, now living in Melbourne, but she is the pin-up girl for South Australian Athletics, and she's going to be uh, in the race taking on Elsie Wellings, who will be very, very hard to beat, coming off a big win in Japan in her debut half marathon. Throw into the mix Zoe Buckman, 1,500-metre runner as well. That has the makings of a ding-dong battle. There's plenty of ding-dong battles out there, mate, on the, on the track. For me, the men's 800 metres, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the 800 metres, and our Triple R, I'm talking about none other than our uh, joint national record holder in uh, Alex Rowe. We've also got Josh Ralph and Jeff Risley. Now, this promises to be a beauty. Ralph's, How's this flow? How's this flow? All of a sudden, stress fractures, runs through them at the Commonwealth Games, did, did his country proud. He's been sort of tr training in secret, I guess, from uh, the general public. And uh, he's back, big fella, Josh Ralph. Keen to see that. Also, Jeff Risley mentioned a few weeks ago he was a little bit sort of wanting to steer clear of Rowey. Um, but uh, now's the time. They're both going to come uh, together and all three of them on the track there, which is going to be great. Now, moving over into the jumps, buddy, uh, another great well, before, feature. Before you go on, we've got the relay button here, Mossy. Oh, it is, it, sorry. It is, of course. You better hand it over. Good, good pass. Now, it is, of course, the relay chance, the national relay chance, 4x100, 4x400. Um, I don't know if it's too late for you and I to get in a team maybe with Jumpy and one other, maybe Alex Rowe, uh, but that's going to be great as well, and that will uh, form part of what's going to be a great run component of the Adelaide Track Classic. Well, let's get on to those jumps, mate. Uh, plenty of action out there in the field. They'll be jumping away, and, mate, I'm assuming for you it's going to be a, a run, a jump, a flip, and a flop. Yeah, well, the women's pole vault is back on again, as well as the men's pole vault as well, it must be said. But the women's, uh, on the back of the, the hype around Nina Kennedy, La Nina, uh, it's going to be great to see how she can respond to the, the performance in Perth that she had. Alana Boyd's one that'll be, be keen to get back on top of the podium in that event as well, as well as the Parnov. So uh, let's see how that one unfolds. But what about, I know there's this very special jump comp that you're looking forward to, mate. Yes, yeah, so I've fallen in love with the long jump and these girls are just fantastic. We've said a number of times, Brooke Stratton returning. Chelsea Janch at age 30 is now starting to make a bit of a, a charge, which is fantastic. Uh, she's gone out there to Gary Bourne and really jumping out well. 
They almost jumped 670 down at Canberra, uh, which is fantastic. We're also seeing Margaret Gayen come back into the fold. She was the sixth in the final over there at Glasgow. South Australian local. Absolutely. She'll be pumped up. And Jess Penny, who probably hasn't, you know, in some ways probably going a little bit backwards, but she's uh, probably about to start to hit her form as well. So You don't, look, you don't want to do long jump no, backwards. Exactly right. No, I'm looking forward to that one because I think there's going to be some, some of the girls might surprise us. But uh, Chelsea Gench in particular... Uh, v Brooks Stratton, I'm calling it uh, Stratton Gench 2. Robbo, for you, mate, uh, let's move over now to our final event, and that is the Chucks. Well, we'll we get our third week straight of the special Ks, and hopefully Kim Mickle, she's been in, reported in the media that she's got a little bit of a strain happening with the Achilles. Hopefully she's pulled up all right from that World Champs qualifier in Perth, and we'll see the full complement of Ks over there in Adelaide. Uh, uh, Kath Mitchell, Kelsey Lee Roberts rounding that out. And let's see them all knock out some more World Champs qualifiers. I want to see 18 World Champs yeah. qualifiers, six by three. Let's see it. The perfect special case. Absolutely. Nothing more, nothing less. And I think one of the Chinese <laughs> chuckers is still there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, she's keeping on. <laughs> <laughs> doing the triple jump still? I'm not sure if you're doing triple jump. That. People probably don't believe us. Um, for me, mate, uh, the Chucks, the season opening uh, Chuck there by Danny Samuels, who yep. is a world ahead of uh, the rest of the, the Chuckers in the land. But let's not forget we've still got two Commonwealth Games uh, finalists uh, in Taryn Golshewski and also Christy Chamberlain, who will be uh, chucking as well. Um, so, you know, Danny, seven-time national champion. All eyes will be on her in the ring to see uh, how she uh, throws it out there in her season opener. And Mossy, if that's not enough run, jump, chuck action, on the Sunday down there in Adelaide is the walks. And the walkers will be pacing around the streets of Adelaide up and down, up and down. And that, that's the national 20K championships are on there. So we'll see the bird. We'll see the likes of Jared Talent in action. Uh, they'll all be there. And uh, as we mentioned in show one... Uh, the walkers, a very big part of Run Jump Chuck. Well, that's all we've got time for this week's folks on Run Jump Chuck. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, if you'd like to get a little bit more of Mossy and Robbo, check out the live stream on Saturday night, 5.45 on South Australian time, and on the east, that's 6.15 over at the west. We've got no idea you can figure that one out for yourself. Mm. Um, don't forget, if you want to grab yourself even a Tartan Couch shirt or a Run Jump Chuck shirt, just go on to mossyandrobbo.com. Uh, we got a couple of sales the other day. Check out these cool cats. Ladies, I'd like to present you with your very oh own God. Run Jump <laughs> Chuck t-shirt. Oh, gosh, I can't. There we go. Back I had to do an impromptu change. There you go. Impromptu change. And they're away, folks. And that is how you give away a couple of run, jump, chuck shirts. Look how well they're running now. We'll catch them on the next lap. And if you can, share the love. Tell all your friends about us. Like us. Put a comment down below. Click on the subscribe. Well, Mossy, we can't end the show without one last segment. And it's a segment that's evolving. Every week it changes slightly. It's all about talent, as we know. And uh, this week... We haven't got an athlete, current athlete, that's, that's, that's on the tour. We haven't got a CEO. I actually got knocked down, knocked back by uh, Athletics WA CEO Wayne Loxley. Wouldn't have a, wouldn't have a bar a, of it. That's a double thumbs I down. I said, there's the guitar, Wayne. He said, no, no, I've got other places to be. So that's a thumbs down for Western Australia. But what I was able to do was I was able to locate Oliver Worm, Matthew Lynch, and it was Valentine's Day. Love was indeed in the air. And we take you out tonight with John Paul Young's very classic love song, Love Is In The Air by Wormy and Lynchy. And don't forget, guys, it's a very simple thing, athletics. Run, jump, and chuck. Okay. Love is in the air, every <laughs> sight and every sound. And I don't know if I've been foolish. And I don't know if I've been wise. But there's something that I must believe in <laughs> And it's there when I look in your eyes